Hello there, so mappers learn how to map through observation and feedback. Anyone's experiences with playing maps transfer to the editor, and anyone else can give feedback based on their own experiences as well. That's how Osu has so easily developed a mapping meta, repeated similarities between maps that are essentially references to pre-existing maps. Modding, the act of constructively criticizing maps, is learned in the same way. Modders see how other mods are written and write their own in a similar fashion, then they adapt further through replies from mappers. Just as is with mapping, Osu has a modding meta, and I think that meta is going to change because of modding v2. On the newly designed Osu website, map-specific forum threads full of long mod posts will be replaced by a modding v2 panel focused on providing concise and orderly feedback. These discussion pages have been activated on a good handful of maps for testing purposes over the last year, so it shouldn't be too surprising that modding v2 will soon be completed and pushed onto all future map sets. Things are actually happening, an exciting change in my opinion, reasons for which I'll talk about soon enough, but this change can also serve as a problem for others. Not everyone knows how modding v2 works yet, therefore if it takes over suddenly, there's going to be a lot of confusion in the mapping scene. To avoid that, let's first go over everything about how to use modding v2. So, after entering the modding v2 panel of any map set via the discussion button here, you'll be met with a lot of unfamiliar buttons and information. Overwhelming at first, I know, but the discussions area near the bottom should be somewhat familiar at least. It's essentially the same content as old forum post mods, organized in a much more intuitive way. Rather than sorting by post date, most mods in modding v2 are sorted chronologically in the map, as determined by their respective timestamps. On the left side is a vertical timeline of sorts visually representing that too, starting with the first comment at 0 seconds, followed by another at 770 milliseconds, and another at 3 seconds, all the way down to the last one at 1 minute 22 seconds in this case. There's also a few different icons on the timeline used to categorize feedback. The first, a blue heart, represents a point of praise. Like a mapper saying, this is a cool pattern, would be categorized as praise. Self-explanatory. Yellow circles indicate suggestions, which will most likely make up the majority of discussions. Feedback like, could have a lower volume because song is quieter, is a good example. Suggestions indicate feedback that's minor or on the more personal side of modding, I'd say. The third one, a pink exclamation mark, is used to signify a problem, the important stuff. Clear mistakes, large-scale concerns, and unrankable issues are what I think most appropriately fit as problems, though there might be a lot of overlap between what classifies a suggestion and a problem depending on who you ask. There's no clear line, and that's usually okay because these are just for organization. The last icon, a green check mark, has a bit of a different function from those three feedback types. Along with a vertical green bar, check marks indicate that a suggestion or problem has been addressed by the map creator. Not necessarily that the feedback was implemented, but that it was at least considered and replied to. So far, I've been looking at the discussion area with replies hidden, but by clicking the expand all button or any of these arrows, I can see responses to feedback just about all of which here are mine. The mapper tag below my name indicates that this is my map set, so I have the ability to reward kudos and resolve discussions once I reply to them. For example, I thought this minor use proper symmetry suggestion made a good point, so I applied it, resolved the discussion, and clicked the thumbs up button. For the map set host, upvoting a comment supposedly gives a modder some form of kudos, aka modding currency, and a high number of upvotes from other users can do the same. Now, details on modding v2 kudos earnings aren't set in stone yet, and I'm kinda skeptical about this whole upvote downvote idea, but maybe I'll save that for later. It's not fully put into action yet, so complaining, maybe not the best idea. Anyway, replying to mods, back on topic. I thought this bad blanket problem someone mentioned was not worth applying. The blanket looks messed up in the editor, as this modder pointed out, but with stacking enabled, it works as intended. Therefore, I rejected the issue, it didn't give it an upvote, and marked it as resolved. Once again, both applying and rejecting issues leads to a resolved discussion. That's kinda hard for some people to understand at first. And of course, if anyone has more to add, a resolved discussion can be reopened by just commenting on the chain. So so back to these icons. While they're visible in the discussion section, that's not the only place. Scrolling to the top of the page reveals another timeline, this one being more condensed than the arbitrary vertical one below. Here, points of feedback properly scale with the actual map's timeline, which is why there's a few overlapping items. People gave feedback on timestamps close to each other. Doing this can reveal stuff like problematic sections of a map, which is good info. With the buttons at the top, I can filter between different types of discussions as well. Selecting resolved, which has the number 2 next to it, shows the only two resolved 
posts. Praises shows the one praise comment, and pending shows the unaddressed suggestions and problems. It's not only the upper timeline that changes though, the comments below are filtered as well. In practical application, I found this to be most useful for replying to new mods, since I can just select the pending option and go through everything down below. Because modding v2 updates in real time, resolving an issue will just make it disappear from here. It's also worth mentioning that the discussions and number of issues here change depending on which difficulty I've selected in the drop down on the left, since, well, each difficulty requires its own feedback. But yeah, by clicking on any of these timeline elements, I can automatically shoot down to the timestamp in question, so navigating is pretty easy. The only potentially confusing thing about this is why the number appears as 13 pending posts when there's only 1, 2, 3, 4 things in the timeline. Where's the other 9? This happens because not every suggestion applies to specific objects. More feedback can be found in the general and all difficulties tabs as indicated by these numbers, including stuff like difficulty settings and metadata changes. So the first three tabs here for organized map feedback, what about the fourth one? History is a log of actions taken in the modding v2 panel, existing only for reference purposes. It shows when issues are resolved, when a map is nominated, and when a map is disqualified. A big step up from reading an entire map thread just to get this information. Alright, covered a lot of stuff, uh, what else is there to modding v2? The main thing I've left out so far is the new discussion section, probably the most important part. This is where mods are actually written. Looking at other comments should have made it clear by now. Mods are not to be written in bulk form as they are on the forums. Each point of feedback is written separately in its own comment, then submitted by clicking on one of the three buttons on the right. Praise, suggestion, or problem. Everything's coming full circle, right? The cool thing about writing mods in Modern V2 is that duplicates are easily weeded out. For example, when I start off a timeline suggestion with a timestamp, a text appears saying that other people have commented on objects near this one. I can then click on a timestamp to automatically scroll to its location and see what was addressed. I can expand this one, read the mapper's response, and reopen the discussion if I feel it's necessary. The only problem with this system is that modders need to actually take the time to look at it, which... Yeah, it doesn't always happen. How hard is it to enable stacking, really guys? But, anyway... That's modding v2. At the moment it's still under construction, so there's going to be a few adjustments and new features as time goes on, but I doubt much of the fundamentals will be changed since it's now near completion and fully functional. The ranking process here is the same as it was on the forums. Get some feedback, find two nominators to help out, and pass through the qualification phase. So far, there's been two maps ranked entirely via the modding v2 panel, one that I nominated, and the other that's my own. From what I've experienced, modding v2 is pretty nice to use, and I think the type of feedback it encourages is going to be a positive thing for the modding scene. The current modding meta involves a lot of fluff, like useless recommendations that don't improve the quality of a map, but are mentioned anyway to make a mod longer. It's not unusual for wall of text mods that span the entire length of my monitor to receive praise, even though most of their content could easily be condensed or removed. Somehow, it's gotten into a lot of people's heads that more length equals a more helpful mod, which I don't really agree with. The modding meta is currently dominated by mods including unnecessary information for the sake of being a theoretically good mod, and the single forum post format that encourages that. Modding v2, however, removes that concern. The perceived value of feedback in the forum system is the overall post, which is why mods have a bunch of fluff, but in modding v2, the value is in each separate piece of feedback. Suggestions like disable widescreen support or remove unnecessary green lines, which affect nothing on the map, will be met with rejection, so eventually, I hope people will see that writing useless content is completely useless. A good mod is one that's beneficial, not one that has a lot of content, and I think modding v2 promotes that mindset much better than the original forums. That's just speculation based on what I've experienced with the new modding system though. Maybe the modding meta won't change, and maybe people will still judge the quality of maps based on how much feedback they've received, but you know, I'd rather be optimistic. I'm optimistic about the future with modding v2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, except for the uprooting thing, that's kind of weird. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.